Hello everyone. Very good evening to all of you. So today we will study about chronic separative otitis media. Myself, Dr. Pratik Gar. So let's start with the question. True about safe CSO. CSO means chronic separative otitis media. That is an infective or inflammatory condition of the middle ear with the involvement of the pus, and it happens chronically. That means the duration is for more than three months. So, what is the definition of CSOM? If I talk, if I talk, so CSOM is a, any otitis media infective or inflammatory condition leading to the pus formation, which is lasting for more than three months, is known as CSOM. So, examiner want to ask what is true. So, option number A is etiology is multiple bacteria. Seems to be a correct option because there are lots of bacteria like Streptococcus pneumoniae, so Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, Haemophilus influenza, Morexilla catarrhalis, and etc. etc. So etiology may be multiple bacteria. Then oral antibiotics are not effective since we are talking about the safe CSOM. So in the safe variety, oral antibiotics are effective. So option number B is incorrect. Ear drops have no role. Again, this is incorrect because in safe uh, CSOM, what we prefer is the Ciplox ear drop, or we can see give the gentamicin ear drop. So ear drop are having definitive role. And in OPD setup, we always prescribe the patient oral antibiotics plus topical antibiotics. Otic hydrocephalus is a complication. See, basically, otic hydrocephalus is a complication of CSOM, but of eticoenteral variety. That is an unsafe CSOM. So, option number D happens in unsafe type. Unsafe CSOM. But examiner is talking about safe CSOM. So, again, this seems to be incorrect. Then comes ossicle, ossicular erosion rate not seen. Yes, in safe CSOM also, ossicular erosion is something which we can see. If the CSOM is long standing, suppose a patient is having history of ear discharge since last one to two years, or maybe more than that, five years or ten years. So then, in that process, some sort of protease enzymes are formed and secreted into the middle ear, leading to ossicular erosion so say yes one it may happen not very common but yes it may happen so again this is an incorrect option so my correct answer is option number a that is the etiology is multiple bacteria so what is cs1 see there are two varieties of the cs1 the first one is tuber tympanic and then comes the atiquental or we also known as unsafe cs1 so let's talk about safe cs1 so what happens in safe cs1 Firstly, the perforation is central in, in the pars tensa. It is not marginal perforation. It is not attic perforation. So in safe CSOM, as the name suggests, tubo tympanic. That means it, it happens in the tympanic cavity in the pars tensa. And the reason is mostly because of the tubo means blockage of eustachian tube. So safe CSOM is mostly because of uh, inflammatory process leading to the blockage in eustachian tube which further leads to collection of the secretions into the middle ear cavity which uh, further invaded by the bacteria, multiple bacteria leading to chronic separative otitis media. So the cause are tubal cause, ASOM, allergy etc. More common in the children then perforation is central and mostly the area involved is anterior inferiorly. Suppose this is my tympanic membrane and these are the four quadrants. Uh, these are the four quadrants. Uh, my line is not in the center. Uh, anyway, so suppose this is my anterior inferiorly. And above area, this is my posterior superior region. Posterior superior quadrant. So in safe variety, the most common area involved is the at anterior inferior, I mean this area. Whereas if we talk about the eticoenteral, this eticoenteral, then the area becomes posterior superior. Okay. Then this area becomes posterior superior. Anyway, so in, uh, let's talk about safe CSOM. Uh, central perforation, 
mostly anterior inferior quadrant mostly in the children because of the blockage of the eustachian tube mostly the discharge there will be the profuse discharge not very much discharge uh, not very, uh, i mean discharge is much i mean larger in the uh, quantity then comes the osteitis of the granulation tissue they are rare but may happens in tubo tympanic if it is long standing or the bacteria involved like the pseudomonas which is very much aggressive so these pseudomonas infection may lead to osteit osteitis or the granulation tissue and there may happen ossicular erosion also that means the stapes or malleus or incus long process etc may get damaged or eroded but in long standing cases it is not very common in tubo tympanic type but it may happen okay so this bony destruction part is rare in tubo tympanic where it is very common in atico enteral and which is the most uh, first structure of the bone which part of the bone is firstly involved so the answer is long process of incus incus long process is the first bone in any of the tubo tympanic or the atico enteral variety firstly it get involved and erodes okay so it, we have already mentioned this point most commonly is a long process of incus okay uh, yes now if we talk about the hearing loss in tubo tympanic variety the hearing loss will be mild to moderate that means around 30 to 40 decibel whereas in the atico enteral variety where we with the more and more ossicular necrosis more and more uh, toxins release so there will be hearing loss will be moderate to severe that may be around may loss uh, losses may be around 60 decibel to 70 decibel or 50 decibel whereas in tubo tympanic it is around 20 to 40 decibel hearing loss then comes the tegmin tympani erosion so again tubo tympanic it is a rare as uh, but in atico enteral or unsafe type it is very common then we talk about the intracranial complications what are the intracranial complication the most common complication is meningitis that is a inflammation or infection of the meninges so it is very common in atico enteral or unsafe type whereas rare in safe type then comes the formation of the polyp or the granulation tissue polyp may form in the tubo tympanic type but mostly the polyp are pale pale means because of mostly of the allergy or a, as an uh, body reactionary mechanism but the polyp formed in the atico enteral unsafe variety are mostly red and fleshy full of blood if you touch the polyp lot of bleeding will be there it is because of the continuous uh, uh, necrotic process going on leading to the more and more inflammation leading to red and fleshy polyps so that is a different then again safe variety by the name itself suggest it is relatively safer leading to less lesser intracranial complication and safe to operate also whereas in atico enteral obviously it is an unsafe variety leading to intracranial complication may lead to brain abscess meningitis sigmoid sinus thrombophlebitis jugular venous thrombophlebitis facial nerve uh, palsy etc so it is an unsafe variety and we have to be more cautious surgery required in tubo tympanic or safe type of csom mostly is tympanoplasty that is a eradication of disease from the medullary cavity with the restoration of the ossicular or tympanic membrane uh, continuity and mechanism but in atico enteral or unsafe type of csom our main aim is to completely eradicate the disease so main aim suppose there is a cholestatoma in the unsafe variety so our aim is to complete removal of the cholestatoma so that even if we want to do the radical mastoidectomy or modified radical mastoidectomy it is preferable and then we uh, restore the hearing mechanism later on okay so and then cholesterol cholesterol granuloma again this is, this is rare in the tubo tympanic variety whereas a common in atico enteral or unsafe type of variety so let's again uh, point out safe variety more of discharge less of granulation less of ossicular necrosis less of the complication treatment will be tympanoplasty uh, happens because of the blockage of the eustachian tube etc if we talk about talk about atico enteral or unsafe type and in unsafe type mostly there is a cholesterol cholestatoma and it happens more in the adults mainly involves a atic area that is known as a pars flacida with leading to the ossicular degeneration degeneration or destruction of the bones like stapes or malleus leading to formation of multiple polyps granulations there may be more and more osteitis 
and the bony destruction will be more treatment required will be the modified radical mastectomy or the radical mastectomy and again the intracranial complication chances are very higher in unsafe type of variety so i hope the comparison uh, which i want to point out is easy for you this is a diagram showing the type of the perforation so see see this is my central perforation what do you mean the central that my perforation is having all around the margins of the pars flexi pars tensa so pars tensa is all around the perforation so this is my central perforation again this is my again central perforation uh, all around surrounded by the margins of the pars tensa and it is a medium size the first one is of anterior central perforation then comes a subtotal perforation look at the diagram and then comes a total perforation see so complete pars tensa is absent here complete pars tensa is absent here and in this total perforation we often we see the bony destruction okay so there will uh, there may be the destruction of the fibrous annulus also which is known as a total perforation there will be no annulus around the pars tensa and then comes the atic perforation it is an unsafe type where the perforation is in the pars flaccida you can see the location of the perforation it's in the atic region and again the last one is a posterior superior marginal perforation you can see the margins are involved that is a perforation on one side there is no continuity of the pars tensa it is just attached to the bone so in that case what happens is the epithelium squamous epithelium from the external auditory canal or any sort of infection can directly go into the atic or entra leading to atic or entral type of variety of the csom now the question number 2 is a tubo tympanic csom commonest operation done is we have already discussed look out at the option the i believe the option number d that is a tympanoplasty is the correct answer because it is in safe type of csom in which what we prefer is tympanoplasty A simple mastectomy radical mastectomy and modified radical mastectomy these all are needed in the unsafe type of uh, uh, csom not very common okay in tubo tympanic type of csom now let's talk about the treatment in tubo tympanic uh, type of the csom what we do we will treatment of the primary pathology is the main stay that is the uh, removal of all the pus and the what is the primary uh, pathology if there is a perforation in the ear drum so what we'll do we will do a tympanoplasty and we'll put a graft and close out that perforation suppose there is a perforation so we will put a graft here okay so the reconstructive surgery most involved here is the meningoplasty or the tympanoplasty whereas in the epicoenter type of variety what we prefer is the uh, firstly the eradication of the disease to remove all the cholecystoma by means of modified radical mastectomy or the radical mastectomy most commonly uh, procedure used is a modified radical mastectomy in short form we can write down as mrm okay plus reconstructive surgery like the meningoplasty or tympanoplasty or we can say reconstruction of the ossicular chain now what is tympanoplasty question number 3 so eradication of the middle ear disease with reconstruction of the tympanic membrane and the ossicle seems to be correct answer so correct definition of the tympanoplasty is eradication of the middle ear disease with reconstruction of ossicles as well as tympanic membrane option let's look out at the other options eradication of disease from inner ear internal ear no eradication of the middle ear disease with the repair of tympanic membrane only no we have to repair the bones also if the stapes is if the uh, incus are eroded or somewhere uh, dissect some part is dissect so we have to do ossicular reconstruction and the fourth option is eradication of the middle ear disease with repair of ossicles only no so correct answer is eradication of the middle ear disease with reconstruction of the tympanic membrane and ossicle so let's try to understand what are the various type of the tympanoplasty so uh, there are five type of tympanoplasty type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 so firstly the type 1 look at this diagram this is my type 1 and uh, tympanoplasty in type 1 tympanoplasty uh, see the ossicular chain is intact there is no uh, destruction of the ossicular chain only there is perforation in the tympanic membrane so in that what we do we will put a graft 
over the ossicular chain uh, either by the only method or by the inlay method so that is known as the type 1 tympanoplasty to simplify we have shown the diagram you can look at the diagram the complete ossicular chain is intact here so what we have done is we have put a graft and usually what we do we put the graft medial to the handle of medius so in the diagram you can see handle of medius is outside or we can say lateral and my graft is placed medial to the handle of medius so by only or inlay the preferred technique is put your graft a uh, medial to the handle of malleus then comes the type 2 tympanoplasty diagram is not shown in, in this uh, slide it's in the next slide so what is type 2 there is repair of ossicular chain with restoration of the liver mechanism i mean suppose this incus is uh, necrosed suppose so what we do generally i will put a graft uh, i will put a cartilage directly over the stay piece so uh, what i'm doing is i'm not maintaining the liver mechanism suppose because the malleus and incus they all are connected now they are all are connected by a joint that is a synovial type of joint so uh, type 2 is repair of the ossicular chain with the maintenance of the liver mechanism that is the malleus and incus should be connected incus and stapes should be connected so if we maintain that and we do the ossicular chain reconstruction then it is known as type 2 then comes a type 3 which is again divided into three parts type 3 minor columella type 3 major columella and type 3 stapes columella now look at uh, look at this diagram type 3 minor columella okay so what we do here is suppose there is an erosion of the incus bone and long process of incus is eroded so what i will do is i will just remove that necrosed part of the incus bone or i'll completely remove that incus bone so liver mechanism is disrupted okay no problem so what we'll do in minor columella what we'll do we'll put a graft over the stapes capitulum as you can see this is my stapes capitulum and we will put we are putting a graft over this which is connecting the either the malleus manubrium or that uh, uh, tympanic membrane with the stapes bone so type 3 minor is repair of ossicular chain by placing graft from the stapes capitulum to the tympanic membrane or manubrium why uh, we are writing here the tympanic membrane or manubrium because manubrium is the handle of the malleus which is attached to the tympanic membrane so if that is intact so we we'll directly put a graft between the tympanic membrane and the stapes capitulum it is minor columella then comes the major columella okay it's in c so here what we do suppose the capitulum or the stapy supra structure are also eroded and there is only foot plate is present so what we will do we will put a graft either maybe torp porp there are available or maybe the cartilage piece so we will do the ossicular reconstruction by placing a graft directly over the foot plate of the stapies and the intact uh, tympanic membrane remnants or we can say the manubrium so i hope you can see in this diagram this is my foot plate no stapy superstructure are there so we will put a graft over the stapy's foot plate it is a tor you can see so this is a top which is connecting the foot plate to the tympanic membrane and we are enhancing this process by putting a cartilage graft so that, that is uh, some more modifications so major columella repair of ossicular chain using a single graft interposed between mobile foot plate and tympanic membrane then comes the type 3 stapes columella okay in d variety what we do here see uh, in major columella process what we are trying to create is the stapes bone foot plate then comes a stapes bone but suppose uh the stapes is intact but there are no malleus malleus is also eroded and incus is also eroded only stapes superstructure are present so type 3 stapes columella variety what we do we will put a graft directly over the stapes capitulum so my tympanic membrane level will not be at the level of the scutum suppose this is my original level i'll mark it in the blue tympanic membrane was at this level na ideally it should be at this level Uh, scutum or capitulum but here what we are doing since malleus and incus are not there or they are necrosed so we remove them and directly putting a graft over the stapes capitulum okay so either maybe the cartilage graft or the fissure graft that is known as a type 3 stapes columella then comes a type 4 this is my type 4 variety in the type 4 variety what we do is we will 
left out the stapes foot plate that means the foot plate will be uh, left behind to come directly in contact with the sound there will be no graft over the foot plate and the graft will be shielded only over the round window why this is done to maintain the phase difference so suppose look at this diagram of the sound energy is coming it will directly hit the foot plate and the vibration will goes to the round window we have shielded the round window with the help of the graft that is a fascia graft so the sound energy will not directly hit the round window instead it will hit to the foot plate it is known as a type 4 variety also done in the severe variety of the cholestatoma or unsafe type of CSO. then comes a type 5 again there are two more uh, uh, varieties uh, type 5a type 5b it is known as a fenestration surgery fenestration surgery what do you mean by that in another window like the lateral semicircular canal or over the promontory we just try to create a fenestra or we will try to create another window like suppose naturally there is old window and round window we all know so these two are an opening which are connecting the middle ear cavity to the inner ear cavity so what we do in type 5 that is a fenestration surgery we will uh, open up or we will make a new opening connecting the middle ear cavity into the inner ear cavity or the cochlea connecting to the scala tympani or the vestibuli so it is known as a fenestration surgery in which we can do the fenestra at the level of lateral semicircular canal maybe at the level of the promontory and accordingly it has been divided not very much popular this technique we use rarely because my, my our main aim is to create the hearing reconstruction also so I hope you got an idea about the tympanoplasty. The type 2 tympanoplasty which we left behind. So I, I put emphasis that in type 2 tympanoplasty we have to maintain the normal liver mechanism. That is I will not remove the necros incus or necros malleus because in type 2 whenever it is used so malleus and incus mostly they are intact. Only suppose the handle of malleus is uh, necros but the incus and malleus joint is continue as we can see in the diagram here you can see in the diagram this is my incus and this is my uh, sorry this is the malleus this is my incus so the joint is intact but only the manubrium or we can say the handle of malleus is necros so in that case we will put the graft we will cap the graft over the remnant of the malleus so the liver mechanism between the malleus incus incus and stapes is intact that is the type 2 now again the last question a 35 year old patient with a six months of known foul smelling ear discharge and hearing loss so we know known foul smelling foul smelling discharge happens in the unsafe variety whereas the known foul smelling ear discharge it occurs in the safe type of CSOM so 35 year patient with a history of six months of ear discharge which is which is non foul smelling and hearing loss is there Tympanic membrane diagram is shown below that treatment include all of the uh, above except so this is a diagram showing a perforation which is in central perforation so we can give the topical antibiotics we can give the systemic antibiotic we can do the mastodectomy uh, sorry tympanoplasty that is a reconstruction of the tympanic membrane but in safe type of uh, this uh, safe type of CSOM, mastoidectomy is not very much preferred. If required, we can do, but in out of these all options, option number C is the one which is least preferred. So it seems to be correct answer. Okay.